everyone, and welcome to the special exclusive CUBE conversation where we continue our coverage of the trends in the database market. With me is Nipun Agarwal, who's the Vice President, MySQL Heatwave and Advanced Development at Oracle. Nipun, welcome. Thank you, Dave. Now, I love to have technical people on the CUBE to educate, debate, inform, and we've extensively covered this market. We were all over the Snowflake IPO, and I, at that time, I remember I challenged organizations, bring your best people because I want to better understand what's happening at database. You know, after Oracle kind of won the database wars, you know, 20 years ago, database kind of got boring. And then it got really exciting with, you know, the big data movement and all the, the, the not only SQL stuff coming out and Hadoop and blah, blah, blah. And now it's just exploding. You're seeing huge investments from uh, many of your competitors. VCs are trying to get in the action. And meanwhile, as I've said many, many times, you're chairman and head of technology, CTO Larry Ellison, continues to invest to keep Oracle relevant. So it's really been fun to watch and I really appreciate you coming on. Um, sure thing. We have written extensively, we talked to a lot of Oracle customers. You got the leading mission critical database in the world. You know, everybody from Fortune 100, we evaluated what Gartner said about the operational databases. So I think it's, there's not a lot of question there. Um, and we've written about that on, on Wikibon about your know, converged databases and the strategy there. And we're going to get into that. Um, we've covered autonomous data warehouse, uh, Exadata clouded customer. And then we just want to really kind of get into your area, uh, which has been kind of caught, caught our attention recently. And I'm talking about the MySQL database service with, with Heatwave. I love the name, I, I laugh. It was un, unveiled, I don't know, a few months ago. So Nippon, let's start the discussion today. Maybe you can update our viewers on, on what is Heatwave? Uh, what's the overall focus uh, with or Oracle and, and how does it fit into the cloud database service? Sure, Dave. So Heatwave is a in-memory query accelerator for the MySQL database service for speeding up analytic queries as well as long running complex OLTP queries. And this is all done in the context of a single database, which is the MySQL database service. Also all existing MySQL applications or MySQL compatible tools and applications continue to work as is, so there is no change. And with this heatwave, Oracle is delivering the only MySQL service which provides customers with a single unified platform for both analytic as well as transaction processing workloads. Okay, so we've seen open source databases in the cloud growing very rapidly. I mentioned Snowflake. Uh, I think Google's BigQuery, you know, gets some, some mention. Uh, we'll talk, we'll maybe talk more about Redshift later on, but, but I'm wondering, well, let's talk about now. How does MySQL Heatwave service, how does that compare to MySQL based services from other cloud vendors? I can get, I can get MySQL uh, from, from others. Um, right. in, in fact, I think we do. I think we, we run Wikibon on the LAMP stack. I think it's running on Amazon, but, but so how does your service compare? No other vendor, like no other vendor offers this differentiated solution with an open source database namely having a single database, which is optimized both for transaction processing and analytics, right? So the example is like MySQL. A lot of other cloud vendors provide a MySQL service, but MySQL has been optimized for transaction processing. So when customers need to run analytics, they need to move the data out of MySQL into some other database for running analytics, right? So we are the only vendor, which is now offering this unified solution for both transaction processing and analytics. That's the first point. Second thing is most of the vendors out there have taken open source databases and they're basically hosting it in the cloud. Whereas Heatwave has been designed from the ground up for the cloud. And it is 100% compatible with MySQL applications, right? And the fact that we have designed it from the ground up for the cloud, where we have spent hundreds of person years of uh, um, research and engineering means that we have a solution which is very, very scalable it's very optimized in terms of performance and it is uh, very inexpensive in terms of the cost. Are you saying, but, but wait, are you saying that you essentially rewrote MySQL um, to create Heatwave, but at the same time maintained compatibility with existing applications? Right, so we enhanced MySQL significantly and we wrote a whole bunch of new code 
which is brand new code optimized for the cloud in such a manner that yes, it is 100% compatible with all existing MySQL applications. What does it mean, Nippon, to, to uh, optimize for the cloud? I mean, I hear that and I say, okay, it's taking advantage of cloud native. I hear, you know, kind of the buzzwords, cloud first, cloud native. What does it specifically mean from a, from a technical standpoint? Right. So first let's talk about performance. What we have done is that we have looked at two aspects. We have, uh, we have worked with shapes, uh, like for instance, like, you know, the compute shapes, which provide the best uh, performance for dollar, right, per dollar. So I'll give you a couple of examples. We have optimized for certain shapes. So uh, Heatwave is an in-memory query accelerator. So the cost of the system is dominated by the cost. So we are working with shapes which provide the cheapest cost per terabyte of memory. Secondly, we are using commodity cloud services in such a manner that it's again optimized for both performance as well as uh, performance per dollar. So an example is, we are not using any locally attached SSDs. We use object store because it's very inexpensive. And then I guess at some point we'll get into the details of the architecture. The system has been really, really designed for massive scalability. So as you add more computes, as you add more servers, the system continues to scale almost perfectly linearly. So this is what I mean in terms of being optimized for the cloud. All right, great. And furthermore, uh, well, yeah, uh, just to add one more thing, over the next few months, you will see a bunch of other announcements where we are adding a whole bunch of machine learning and data-driven based automation, which we believe is critical for the cloud. Right? So optimized for performance, optimized for the cloud, and machine learning based automation, which we believe is critical for any good uh, cloud-based service. All right, I, I'm going to come back and ask you more about the architecture, but but you know you mentioned some of the others taking open source databases and, and shoving them into the cloud. Uh, let's take let's take the example of AWS. They they have a series of specialized data stores, uh, uh, in, in, in for different workloads. Aurora is for OLTP. I actually think it's based on on MySQL Redshift, which is based on Par Excel, um, and and so and I've asked. Amazon about this and their response actually kind of made sense to me. Look, we want the right tool for the right job. We want access to the primitives because when the market changes, we can change faster as opposed to if we put, if we start building bigger and bigger databases with more functionality, it's, it's, we're not as agile. So that kind of made sense to me. I know we, again, we use a lot. We, we use, I think I said MySQL and Amazon. We're using DynamoDB, you know, works. That's cool. We're not huge. You know, and I, we fully admit, and we've researched this, when you start to get big, that starts to get maybe expensive, but, but, but what do you think about, you know, that approach and why is your approach better? Right. We believe that there are multiple drawbacks of having a different databases or different services, one optimized for transaction processing and one for analytics and having to ETL between these different services. First of all, it's uh, expensive because you have to manage uh, different databases. Secondly, it's complex. From an application standpoint, applications now need to understand the semantics of two different databases. It's inefficient because you have to transfer data at some periodicity from one database to the other one. It's not secure because there is a security aspects involved when you're transferring data and also the identity of users in the two different databases is different. So it's the approach which has been taken by Amazon's and such we believe is more costly, complex, inefficient and not secure. Whereas with Heatwave, all the data resides in one database, which is MySQL, and it can run both transactional processing and, and analytics. So in addition to all the benefits I talked about, customers can also make their uh, uh, decisions in real time because there is no need to move the data. All the data res resides in a single database. So as soon as you make any changes, uh, those changes are visible to customers for queries right away, which is not the case when you have different siloed specialized databases. Okay, I mean, that, that, you know, a lot of ways to skin a cat and that, what you just said makes sense. By the way, I, we were saying before, uh, you know, companies have taken off the shelf or, or open source databases, shoved them in the cloud. I, I have to give Amazon some props. They actually have done engineering to Aurora and Redshift and, you know, they've got the engineering capabilities to do that. But, but you can see, for example, in Redshift, the way they handle uh, 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 separating compute from storage. It, it's maybe not as elegant as some of the other players like a Snowflake, for example, but they get there and they, maybe it's a little bit more brute force, but so I don't want to just make it sound like they're just, you know, hosting off the shelf sure. in the cloud. But is it fair to say that there's like a crossover point? So in other words, if I'm smaller 
And I'm not like doing a bunch of big, like, like us. I mean, it's fine, it's easy, I spin it up, it's, you know, it's cheaper than having to host my own servers. So there's, there's, presumably there's a sweet spot for that approach and a sweet spot for your approach. Is that fair or do you feel like you can cover a wider spectrum? Uh, we feel we can cover the entire spectrum, not wider, the entire spectrum. And uh, we have benchmarks published, which are actually available on GitHub for anyone to try. You will see that this approach which you have taken with the MySQL database service and HeatWave, we are faster, we are cheaper without having to move the data. And the mileage or the amount of improvement you will get surely varies. So if you have less data, the amount of improvement you will get may be like say 100 times, right? Or 500 times with smaller data sizes. If you get to larger data sizes, this improvement amplifies to 1,000 times or 10,000 times, right? And similarly for the cost, if the data uh, size is smaller, the cost advantage you will have is less. Probably maybe, maybe uh, MySQL and HeatWave is one third the cost. If the data size is larger, the uh, cost advantage amplifies. So to your point, MySQL database service in HeatWave is going to be better for all sizes, but the amount of mileage, the amount of benefit you will get increases as the size of the data increases. Okay, so you, you're saying you got, you got better performance, better cost, uh, but better price performance. Let me just push back a little bit on this because I, I, you know, having been around for a while, I often see these performance and price comparisons. And what, what, what often happens is a vendor will take the latest and greatest, the one they just announced, and they'll compare it to, you know, a, an N minus one or an N minus two running on old hardware. So, you know, is, <laughs> Uh, are you normalizing for that? Is, is that the game you're playing here? I mean, how can you give, a, give us confidence that it's, this is, these are kind of legitimate benchmarks in your GitHub? Absolutely. Repo? I'll give you a bunch of like, you know, information, but let me preface this by saying that all of our scripts are available in the open source in the GitHub repo for anyone to try. And we would welcome feedback otherwise. Right? So we have taken, yes, the latest version of MySQL database service in HeatWave we have optimized it and we have run multiple benchmarks, for instance, TPCH, TPCDS, right? Because the amount of improvement uh, a query will get depends upon the specific query, it depends upon the predicates, it depends upon the selectivity. So we just wanted to use standard benchmarks. So it's not the case that you're using certain classes of queries which may benefit gateway more, right? So standard benchmarks. Similarly, for the other vendors um, or other services like Redshift, we have uh, uh, run benchmarks on the latest shapes of Redshift, the most optimized configuration, which they recommend uh, running their scripts. So this is not something that, hey, we're just running out of the box. We have optimized Aurora. We have optimized Redshift to the best possible extent we can based on their guidelines, based on their latest release. And that's what we are talking about in terms of the numbers. All right, well, now, good, good, please continue. Yeah. Now, for some other vendors, and I, if you get to the benchmark section, we'll talk about when they're comparing with other services, let's say uh, Snowflake. Well, there there are issues in terms of we can't legally run Snowflake numbers, right? So there we have uh, looked at some reports published by GigaOM report, and we are taking the numbers published uh, by the GigaOM report for Snowflake, Google BigQuery, and Azure Synapse numbers, right? So those we have not run ourselves, but for AWS Redshift as well as AWS Aurora, we have run the numbers, and I believe these are the best numbers anyone can get. I, I on saw those I saw that GigaOM report. And I got to say, you know, GigaOM, sometimes I'm like, eh. But I got to say that, that, I forget the guy's name. He knew what he was talking about. He, he, did, he did a good job, I thought. I, I, was, I was curious as to the workload. I always say, well, what's the workload? And, and, but I, I thought that report was pretty detailed and Snowflake did not look great in that report. Oftentimes, and they've been marketing the heck out of it. I forget who sponsored it. It, is, it was sponsored content. But, but I, did, I remember seeing that and thinking, hmm, you know, so I, I think maybe for Snowflake, that sweet spot is not, maybe not that performance, maybe it's the simplicity. And I think that's where they're making their mark. And most of their databases are small, right? And a lot of read only stuff. And so they've found a market there, but, but I want to come back to the architecture and, and, and really sort of understand how you've, able, you're, you've been able to get this range of both performance and cost. You talked about, I thought I heard, you know, the, you're optimizing the chips, you're using object store, um, you're, you're, you've got an architecture that's not using SSD, it's using object store. So uh, is there caching there? I, I wonder if you could just give us some details of the architecture and tell us you know, how you got to where you are. 
Right. So let me start off saying like, you know, what are the kind of numbers we are talking about, right? Just to kind of be clear, like uh, what the improvements are. So if you take uh, the MySQL database service in HeatWave in uh, Oracle Cloud and compare it with a MySQL service in any other cloud, and if you look at smaller data sizes, say data sizes which are about half a terabyte or so, okay. HeatWave is 400 times faster, 400 times faster. And as you get well, to- Sorry, large, sorry to interrupt. What are, you, what are you measuring there? Faster in terms of what? Uh, uh, latency. So okay. we, we take TPCH 22 queries, we run them on HeatWave, and we run the same queries on a MySQL service on any other cloud, half a terabyte, and the performance in terms of latency is 400 times faster with HeatWave. Thank you, okay. If you go to a larger data size, right, then the other data point we were looking at, say something like, you know, four terabytes, there, we did two comparisons. One is with AWS Aurora, which is, as you said, uh, they have taken MySQL, they have done a bunch of innovations over there and they're offering it as a premier service. So on four terabytes, TPCH, MySQL database service with HeatWave is 1100 times faster than Aurora. It is three times faster than the fastest shape of Redshift, right? So Redshift comes in different flavors. So I'm talking about dense compute too, right? And again, looking at the most, uh, a recommended configuration from Redshift. So 1100 times faster than Aurora, three times faster than Redshift, and at one third the cost, right? So this is what I just really want to point out that it is much faster and much cheaper, one third the cost. And then going back to the GigaOM report, uh, there was a comparison done with Snowflake, Google BigQuery, Redshift, Azure Synapse. I won't go into the numbers here, but HeatWave was faster on both TPCH as well as TPCDS across all these products and cheaper compared to any of these products, right? So faster, cheaper on all, both the benchmarks right? across all these products. Now let's come to uh, uh, like, what is the technology underneath? Great. So basically there are three parts which you're uh, uh, um, gonna see. One is improved performance, very good scale and improved or lower cost. So the first thing is that HeatWave has been optimized and uh, for, for the for the cloud. And when I say that, and we talked about this a bit earlier, one is we are using the cheapest shapes which are available. We are using the cheapest services which are available without having to compromise the performance. And then there is this machine learning based automation. Right? Now underneath, in terms of the architecture of HeatWave, there are basically, I would say four key things. First, there's a, 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 a HeatWave is an in-memory engine. The representation which we have in memory is a hybrid columnar representation, which is optimized for vector processing. That's the first thing. And that's pretty table stakes these days for anyone who wants to do in memory analytics, right? Except that it's hybrid columnar, which is optimized for vector processing. So that's the first bit. The second thing which starts getting to be novel is that HeatWave has a massively parallel architecture, which is enabled by a massively partitioned architecture. So we take the data, we read the data from MySQL into the memory of the heat wave, and we massively partition this data. So as we're reading the data, we are partitioning the data based on the workload. The sizes of these partitions is such that it fits in the cache of the underlying processor. And then we are able to consume these partitions really, really fast. So that's the second bit, which is like massively parallel architecture enabled by massively partitioned architecture. Then the third thing is that we have developed new state-of-art algorithms for distributed query processing. So for many of the workloads, we find that joins other long pole in terms of the amount of time it takes. So we at Oracle have developed new algorithms for distributed joint processing and similarly for in many other uh, uh, operators. And this is how we are able to consume this data or process this data, which is in memory really, really fast. And finally, and what we have is that we have an eye for scalability and we have designed algorithms such that there's a lot of overlap between compute and communication, which means that as you're sending data across various nodes, and there could be like, you know, dozens of, of nodes or hundreds of nodes that we are able to overlap the computation time with the communication time. And this is what gives us massive scalability in the cloud. Yeah, so, so some hardcore database techniques that you've brought to HeatWave. Um, that's, that's impressive. Uh, thank you for, for that description. Um, 
let me ask you, just go a quick aside. So my SQL open source, HeatWave is what? Is it, is it like a uh, open core? Uh, is it open source? Uh, no, so HeatWave is something which has been designed and optimized for the cloud, right? So it can't be open source and it is not open source. It's a service. It is a service, that's okay. correct. So it's a managed service that I, that I pay Oracle to, to host for me. Okay, got it. That's right. Um, okay, I, I wonder if you could talk about sort of the use cases that you're seeing for, for HeatWave, you know, any patterns that you're seeing with, with customers? Sure. So we have had the service, uh, we had this HeatWave service in limited availability for almost 15 months. And it's been about five months since we have gone GA. And there's a very interesting trend of uh, customers we are seeing. The first one is, we are seeing many, many migrations from AWS, specifically from Aurora. Uh, similarly, we are seeing many migrations from Azure MySQL, we are seeing migrations from Google. And the number one reason customers are coming is because of ease of use, because they have their databases currently siloed, as you we were talking about some uh, for optimized for transaction processing, some for analytics. Here, what customers find is that in a single database, they're able to get very good performance. They don't need to move the data around. They don't need to manage multiple databases. Right? So we are seeing many migrations from these services. And the number one reason is um, reduced complexity of ease of use. And the second one is much better performance and uh, reduced cost. Right? So that's the first thing that we are very excited and delighted to see the number of migrations we are getting. The second thing which we are seeing is uh, initially when we had the service launched, we were like, you know, targeting really towards analytics. But now what we are finding is many of these customers, for instance, who have been running on Aurora, when they are moving to MySQL and HeatWave, they are finding that many of uh, the OLTP queries as well are seeing significant acceleration with the HeatWave. So now customers are moving their entire applications um, on, over to HeatWave. So that's the second trend we are seeing. The third thing, and uh, I think I kind of missed mentioning this earlier, one of the very key and unique value propositions, propositions we provide with the MySQL database service and HeatWave is that we provide a mechanism where if customers have their data stored on premise, they can still leverage the HeatWave service by uh, uh, enabling MySQL replication. So they can have their data on premise, they can replicate this data in the Oracle cloud, and then they can run analytics. So this, um, uh, deployment, which we're calling the hybrid deployment, is turning out to be very, very popular because there are customers, there are some customers who for various reasons, compliance or regulatory reasons, cannot move the entire data to the cloud or, or, or migrate the data to the cloud completely. So this provides them a very good setup where they can continue to run their existing database. And when it comes to getting benefits uh, of HeatWave for query acceleration, they can set up this replication. And, and I can run that on any, what, any available server capacity or is there an appliance to, to facilitate that? Or is no, this is just standard MySQL replication. So if a customer is yeah. running MySQL on premise, they can just turn on this uh, replication. We have obviously enhanced it to support this uh, inbound replication between on-premise and the Oracle Cloud, but something which can be enabled as long as source and destination are both MySQL. Okay, so I want to come back to this sort of idea of, of the architecture a little bit. I, I mean, it's hard for me to go toe to toe with the, you know, I'm not an engineer, but, but I'm going to try anyway. So you've talked about OLTP queries, I thought I always thought HeatWave was optimized for analytics, but so, you know, I, I want to push on this notion because, you know, people think uh, of this, the converged database and what you're talking about here with HeatWave as sort of the Swiss army knife, which is great because you got a screwdriver and you, you, you got a, 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 you know, Phillips and a, and a flathead and some scissors. Maybe they're not as good. They're not as good necessarily as, as the purpose built tool. But you're arguing that this is best of breed for OLTP and best of breed for analytics, both in terms of performance and cost. Am I getting that right? Or is, or is this really a Swiss army knife where, right. you know, that, that, that flathead is really not as good as the big long screwdriver that I have in my bag? Yes, so you're getting it right, but I do want to make a clarification that heat wave is definitely the accelerator for all your queries. All analytic, uh, all analytic queries, and also for the long running complex uh, transaction processing queries, right? So yes, HeatWave is the Uber uh, query accelerator engine. However, when it comes to transaction processing in terms of your insert statements, delete statements, right? Those are still all done and served 
by the MySQL database, right? So all of the transactions are still sent to the MySQL database and they're persisted there. It's the queries for which HeatWave is the accelerator. So what you said Got is it. correct for all yeah. query acceleration, HeatWave is the engine. Makes sense. Okay, so if I'm a MySQL customer and I want to use HeatWave, what do I have to do? Do I have to make changes to my existing applications? You, you implied earlier that no, it's just sort of, you know, plugs right in, but, but, but can you clarify that? Yes, there are absolutely no changes which any MySQL or MySQL compatible application needs to make to take advantage of HeatWave. HeatWave is an in-memory accelerator and it's completely transparent to the application. So we have like dozens and dozens of um, like applications which have migrated to HeatWave and they're seeing the same thing, similarly tools. So if you look at various tools which work for analytics like Tableau, Looker, Oracle Analytics Cloud, all of them will work just seamlessly. And this is one of the reasons we had to do a lot of heavy lifting in the MySQL database itself, right? So the MySQL database engineering team was uh, has been very actively working on this. And one of the reasons is because we did the heavy lifting and we made enhancements to the MySQL optimizer and the MySQL storage layer to uh, do the integration of HeatWave in such a seamless manner. So there is absolutely no change which an application needs to make in order to leverage or benefit from HeatWave. You said earlier, Nipun, that you, you, you're seeing migrations from, I think you said Aurora and Google BigQuery, you might've said Redshift as well. Do you, what kind of tooling do you have to facilitate migrations? Right. Now there are multiple ways in which customers may want to do this, right? So the first tooling which we have is that customers, as I was talking about the replication or the inbound replication mechanism, uh, customers can set up HeatWave in the Oracle cloud and they can send the data, they can set up replication between their instances in their cloud and HeatWave. Second thing is we have various kinds of tools to like facilitate the data migration in terms of like, you know, fast ingest and such. So there are a lot of, you know, such customers we are seeing who are kind of migrating and we have a plethora of like, you know, tools and applications in addition to like uh, setting up this uh, inbound replication, which is the most seamless way of getting customers started with HeatWave. So I think you mentioned before, I, I have my notes, some, uh, machine intelligence or machine learning. We've seen that <clears throat> with autonomous database. It's a big, big deal, obviously. How does HeatWave take advantage of machine intelligence and machine learning? Yeah, and I'm probably going to be talking more about this in the future, but what we have already is that HeatWave uses machine learning to intelligently uh, automate many operations, right? So we know that, you know, when there's a service being offered in the cloud, uh, customers expect automation and there are a lot of vendors and a lot of services which do a good job with automation. One of the places where we are going to be very unique is that HeatWave uses machine learning to automate many of these operations. And I'll give you one such example, which is provisioning. Right now with HeatWave, when a customer wants to determine how many nodes are needed for running their workload, they don't need to make a guess they invoke a provisioning advisor. And this advisor uses machine learning to sample a very small percentage of the data. We are talking about like, you know, 0.1% sampling, and it's able to predict the amount of memory with 95% accuracy, which this data is going to take. And based on that, it's able to make a prediction of how many servers are needed. So just a simple operation, the first step of provisioning, this is something which is done manually across uh, on any other service, whereas with HeatWave, we have machine learning based advisor. So this is an example of what we're doing. And in the future, we'll be offering many such innovations uh, as a part of the MySQL database and the HeatWave service. Well, I got to say, I was a skeptic, but I really appreciate it. You, you're answering my questions. And you know, a lot of people, when, when you made the acquisition and, and inherited MySQL, thought you were going to kill it because they thought it would be competitive to Oracle database. Uh, I'm happy to see that, that you've invested and, uh, and, and figured out a way to, hey, we, we, we can serve our community and you know, continue to be the steward of, uh, of MySQL. So Nippon, thanks very much for coming on theCUBE. Appreciate your time. Sure. Thank you so much for the time, Dave. Appreciate right. it. And thank you for watching everybody. This is Dave Vellante with another CUBE conversation. We'll see you next time.